Kyle here from allmeterviews.blogspot.com. Um, here to uh, at least do one sort of wrap-up or follow-up uh, face warning related. I did the whole face warning, face warning John R. Darch Matthaios thing. And I never did a songs list. I did the albums list. I did this. I never did a songs list. Um, but I wanted to show some stuff. So I, you know, I stumbled across, like one, I have Jim Matthaios's, um album. I, had, I showed First Impressions. I still have the, the booklet around here somewhere. Um, but then I found his uh, second solo album, Away With Words, which it didn't have Kevin Moore on it, I don't think, but it, it had Mark Zonder and maybe Joey Vera. I currently the credits I looked in here. Nick Vera, yeah. Joey Vera basically was like the go-to face warning bass player. And he's like this hired gun. He's done all... Also Ray Alder. No, he was thanked. But yeah, I mean, it was kind of like... And this came out, I think, in 98. Mocha's showing up. She asking for more food. I just gave her some treats. And I gave her some soup and some other stuff. Little key. Yeah, you you you've heard a lot of stuff about Fates Warning. You're a pretty big Fates Warning fan, aren't you, Keeney? Go look outside and look at the snow. All right. So yeah, Way with Words came out. It's weird because I'm doing it on both cameras still. Still trying to get a hang of because uh, I've had 99 on Metal Blade. So, I mean, I I remember listening to First Impressions more than this one. Because I remember, like, buying this one much after, like, m a few years after it came out, um, Away With Words. But I remember some people saying that this album was better. Like, it had more Fate's Warning moments. Because 99, I mean, that was after Pleasant Shade of Grey. I'm like, but, um, I don't know. It was more of, like, a matter of, like, well, how many, how much money do I have? And picking my spots and stuff like that. So, anyway, I need to revisit this. I should, I should have done that, but, um... Looking at the track list, I can't even read this. Title track. I mean, I so there's no. I don't think there's any vocals. It's all instrument. I mean, it's similar to first. First impressions was like this almost acoustic new age album. And I think this is still kind of new agey, but maybe more a little more along the lines of like uh, like chroma key without vocals. I don't know. Kevin Moore's not on it though, unfortunately. Now we get the other kitty cat. So they're they're both wanting to be stars on the camera. So. Then I, when I saw them in, 19, in 2019, I don't remember if I showed this. I probably did, and I just ruined the set list. So I didn't ruin it, but, you know, part of it came out. This is the set list I got. This is disappointing. I need, like, point of view, the last song here. As you can see. Um, they did do, let's see here, they, A Pleasant Shade of Grey Part 3, Seven Stars, Pieces of Light and Shade of Thing was the biggest highlight for me from the rooftops, the 11th hour. It's only the third time I got to see them. Saturday, March 16th at Medina. It used to be known as Medina Ballroom in the West Metro of Minneapolis, Western Suburbs. I don't know if it's considered Medina Ballroom anymore. I saw King's X and Galactic Cowboys there in, I say, 99, the winter of 99. So that was almost like... I think I remember mentioning that. That was almost 20 years to the day. So the other thing I ended up purchasing at that, and I got the guys to sign this, but the weird thing is, this is the Pleasant Shade of Grey, I think it's a tab book. Yeah, it's all colored and stuff like that. Well, because Queensryche was the headliner at that show, so I was hanging around a little bit, hoping to say hello to Jim Matheos, or any other members in it. You know, my memory must be poor. I did a review video, I think. I wrote something in the blog about it. I'm wondering if one of two things happened. They had already signed it before I bought it. I know it wasn't cheap. That was part of it. I don't know how much this thing cost. But, um, or maybe I gave it to the merch guy and brought it back, brought backstage for him to sign it. That would be kind of weird. So I have a sliver I'm dealing with right now. But look at this thing. I mean, it's just like, for a fan of A Pleasant Shade of Grey like I am... It's like one of my most revered albums ever. This is just like an obvious um, thing to have, even though I don't even play guitar. I mean, I, I had an acoustic guitar, you know, in high school. I bought it at a flea market for like $25, $30. Um, but I switched to bass guitar. I, I, sold, I traded that in and got a bass guitar when I was in college a couple years later. 
but um, I kind of concluded I could never have my own like distinct guitar style, so maybe I could have a distinct bass guitar style. Anyway, um, it was a neat deal just as a collector. I can't remember how much it was. It was probably $30, something like that, but I, I forgot the fact that they'd signed it, but um, look at these. <laughs> I mean, you know, I used to be able to read music for trumpet, looking at some of it's like there are three parts, or they're just playing them three times at three three notes at a time. You know, <laughs> it's like octaves. That's how a chord's supposed to look because then you have the tabs. And I remember trying to learn to how tablature works with where your fingers are and what string and everything like that. And but um, yeah, pleasant shade of gray. It's like the the document, like the document, the film, the video, the concert film that they showed some of that stuff. So, so what I also wanted to do was. As I mentioned a handful of times on the dreamtheaterforums.org, a lot of Fates Warning fans on there, of course, since the fan base for Fates Warning, a lot of them are Dream Theater fans. Um, they did the, a, the top 50 Fates Warning songs countdown. They only got 19 people to participate, including myself. And they've done these things in the past. They did a Rush one, I don't know, it was like a year ago. I forget when it was. It was I think it was 2021 at one point. I didn't participate in the Rush one. And I really don't love ranking, especially songs. I don't love ranking songs that easy. I just don't, I'm not good at it. It gives me just, I think, overthink about it. But the other thing is just the, the issues with ranking songs and how much work it is. And then you look at the, the differences in what people put in. So I just haven't, there's been other ones I just haven't participated in. So I did participate in this one. Probably the last one I participate in. Unless it was something more directly. I mean, Fate 20 are one of a core, a few core bands that I just, I'm very personal about. And I have such a long and, and dedicated history to. I know their catalog really well that I felt like I I should. But, I, you know, this whole thing and seeing the results of it. I'm not going to give the results of the actual, the 19 people that participated. They did the countdown. But I'll, I'll talk about my own results. So. I did a couple different lists. I submitted a list. They don't, they had this rule. They're treating, you know, what did I do with it? Treating, I mentioned before, Pleasant Shade of Grey as not 12 songs, even though it's 12 parts, but 11 songs. To me, this is one song. It was one composition just split up. I mean, the Ivory Gate, Ivory Gate, not Gates, the Ivory Gate of Dreams is one song, but it has movements. Even though it's in separate tracks and they play the separate parts live and stuff, it's one song. But they made us separate them. So what I, I just got so thrown off by that. I said, if I'm going to do this, fine. I'm going to I'm gonna vote for every track first on this album. And I ranked them, even though I probably shouldn't have even done that. But um, So I did my own list that has this the way I believe it should be as one song. You know, I consider like misplaced childhood one song too, really, because it's just one long suite, um, kind of like side B of or side B, I think, of Abbey Road. But anyway, so let's just go. I'll count down as fast as I can. So my submission had some of these songs at the bottom here were not on my submission. I can't remember where my submission started. I think it started at well, I thought I only had a few. I don't. Anyway. Number 50, I have the re... I was going to show the video... The, uh, I could pause, I suppose. So here's the rankings for the Fates Warning songs on my personal list. So I had number number 50, I had from uh, Perfect Symmetry, The Arena. I'm not going to start commenting on these songs. It'll take too long. Number 49, I had from... From uh, Theories of Flight, White Flag. Number 48. Track it down. I have from uh, Parallels, Don't Follow Me. Number 47. I don't have I don't have my vinyl here. I have the song Destination Onward from the last album, uh, Long Day, Good Night. Best song on there to me. Number 46. Um, learning to kind of consider kind of overrated actually, but still a good song. Uh, the epic that closes Waking the Guardian, Exodus. Uh, number 45, uh, from also from uh, 
Perfect Symmetry, um, Static Axe. Number 44 from, um, I, I kind of lumped them in together. Uh, Darkness in a Different Light, Falling slash Falling Further. Number uh, 43, this is shuffling around like the Kevin video I did. Number 43, um, Like Stars Our Eyes Have Seen from Theories of Flight. Number 42, um, from No Exit, Anarchy Div Divine. Number 41, from, again, from Parallels, Life in Still Water. A very popular song, anyway. Number 40, um, also, no, from Perfect Symmetry, It Fates hands and then i added it slash eight fates fingers the way we voted because that was on the chasing time compilation i believe instrumental version of that song kind of number 39 from oh good lord where is it shuffling around the deck there is a flight um sos oops number uh 38 Ooh, I have one on one song on here twice. Well, I'm gonna have to bump stuff up. <laughs> My apologies. Number thirty-seven. I did this. Uh, so this would be thirty-eight. So I guess I'm I'm off by one. Well, thirty-seven. I'll have to add a song at the end. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it. Number thirty-seven. I have shelter me slash circles. Um, number thirty-six. First one from this album, if I can find it, from FWX or X, uh, River Wide, Ocean Deep. Number 35 from, where is it? Again, I need to get rid of a couple of these booklets here. Number 35 from No Exit, Silent Cries. Number 34 um, where is it? From FWX, A Handful of Doubt. <laughs> Number 33, from No Exit, Shades of Heavenly Death. That's a great tune. I couldn't, I didn't remember how good that was until recently visiting it. Number 32, from Waken the Guardian, the song Guardian, a favorite, a fan favorite especially. Because I gotta get rid of this, and I gotta get rid of this. There we go. Uh, number thirty-one. Where is the booklet for that? It's hiding in here. From parallels, eye to eye. Number thirty. From FWX. Left here. The, that's the opening track on that album. Okay, number... I'm going to go down, scroll down here. Number 29. That would be a 29. Um, again, going back to Theories of Flight. Um, uh, seven Stars. Great tune. Number 28. Going back to FWX. Simple Human. Great heavy riff on that song. Number uh, 27 from Disconnected, one. Uh, let's see here. Number 26 from, from um, uh, Inside Out, song um, uh, Monument. Very, a fan favorite. 20, I have a 26. Yeah, 26. Again, these are all off by one technically number 25 now we're getting to the top 25 um from parallels the road goes on forever great ballad number 24 from perfect symmetry through different eyes uh number 23 gonna go back to where did it go from Awaken the Guardian, the song Prelude to Ruin. 
I don't know if I, I may have put that a little high, but I still really like that song. Number 22 from Parallels, Leave the Past Behind. I don't know why I put it that high. I've always liked that song, but I don't know. It's a great opening track to the album. Number uh, 21, um, finally we're going to see this album on show up. The, from the debut album, Night on Brockin, uh, Damnation. Great tune from that album. Number 20. Going back to, uh, if I can find it, FWX, the song um, Wish, great closing, mesmerizing track, love that song. Number nine, now we're in the top 20, so number 19, um, getting into the big ones, from Disconnected, the song So. Number 18, going back to... Uh, Waken the Guardian, the song Fata Morgana. Number, um, let's see here. Number 17, going back to uh, per uh, Perfect Symmetry album, the song Chasing Time. Mesmerizing, great ballad on that song. Great violin work. Um, number 16, now, finally, took forever it seemed like, from the Spectre Within album, the song um, Traveler in Time. Number 15. Going back to uh, uh, Theories of Flight. The song uh, From the Rooftops. I believe that's the opening track on Theories of Flight. All right, so the top 15. Now we're getting into the real cream of the crop. I mean, all these songs I love for the most part, but all right, here we go. Sort of top 15, top 14, top 15. Anyway, um, number 14, that was 15. Number 15 was from the rooftops from Theories of Flight. Number 14, um, from FWX, Another Perfect Day. Number 13, um, going back to the, uh, the Parallels album, Point of View. Pretty high ranking for that. I'm actually surprised I put it that high, not thinking about that. But anyway, still love that song. Number 12, going back to Disconnected, 2000, year 2000. The song uh, Pieces of Me. All right, so number 11, going back to Theories of Flight again. Uh, the song, number 11, The Ghosts of Home, the closing track eerie dreamy like eerie song eerie ending to that song all right number 10 now we're in the top 10 going back to specter within album uh the song the apparition number nine going back to fwx i believe it's the highest ranked track on this album i have song heal me love the song heal me off of fwx number uh that was number nine number eight um Going back to Parallels, the highest ranked song on Parallels, I believe, The Eleventh Hour. Number seven, um, going to the Perfect uh, Perfect Symmetry album, the highest ranked song on Perfect Symmetry I have, Nothing Left to Say. I love it. Everyone loves that song, and rightfully so. It's a great piece. Number six, the highest ranked John Arch song. Oops, I got the wrong album. Where did it go? Where did you go? From the Spectre Within album, Epitaph. Absolutely adore Epitaph. It's such a crowning achievement. So great. Number five, going back to the Disconnected album. Top five, Something From, no something from Nothing. Something For Nothing, Something Of Nothing, Something From Nothing. Number four, the highest ranked song on the album that almost the whole thing was on here. The Theories of Flight album, the light and shade of, of things. Number three, the their biggest epic, well, sort of, their first epic, rather. Uh, number three from the No Exit album, The Ivory Gate of Dreams. Number two, from the Disconnected album, an absolute masterpiece, the, the epic with Kevin Moore still remains. And also, so number one, of course, Everyone can guess it. Also with Kevin Moore, number one, their, their greatest achievement from Fate's Warning, Pleasant Shade of Grey. So I'm not going to go through that whole countdown again, but I'll just say, insert 
I put some of the Arch Matheos and Arch stuff, and so I had number. I have num Pleasant Shady Gray still at number one with adding the Arch stuff, the other Arch stuff. Still remains as number two, but then I had Cheyenne. Let's just see here. Yeah, Sh there's a few other songs. Let me just go over that stuff first. It's, it won't be take too long to do. I inserted. Let's see. <laughs> I had Straight and Narrow from um, Sympathetic Resonance. Straight and Narrow at number 37, which is one of the better songs on, on Sympathetic Resonance. Um, and then I had Tethered from um, what Winter Ethereal at number 31, from the Arch the Thanos album. Winter Ethereal. And then I had, I think that's it. Um, yep, 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 yep. So, let me just grab it. And then, of course, I had at number three, or number five, Cheyenne. And then right after that, the Ivory Gate of Dreams. And then right after the Ivory Gate at four. And then right after the Ivory Gate of Dreams, and number three, I had Relentless from... Uh, Twist of Fate, the two John Arch songs from the John Arch EP, Twist of Fate, and it still remains number two and a Pleasant Shady Ray number one. So, I you know, it's, people say the sacrilege, it's not Fate's warning, whatever. You know, it it isn't technically, of course. Um, none of this, those, you know, and you you have um, Mike Portnoy on drums, of course. You don't have a Fate's warning drummer, um, but you know, you do have Joey Vera on bass on this. So, but I just think that Jim Matheos, I mean, you could put the OSI stuff in there, I guess. I, the OSI is enough other factors, outside factors, I don't think it fits. But I think the Arch Arch and Arch Matheo stuff still fits under that close umbrella. And those these two songs especially, Relentless and Cheyenne, that were on this. Could have been Fate's Warning songs anyway. I mean, they, they just were so good. They, even though they were John Arch compositions largely. Um, they're just so good. And they, I, you know, I can't, I can't feel like they did things better than them. They, they did... They mastered prog metal. John Arch, maybe it was all those years that he was off, he mastered the craft of writing two unbelievably perfect prog metal epics or mini epics. One was 12 minutes, one's like 17 minutes or whatever, or 16 minutes. So that's my Fate's Warning song count track list. Uh, I mean, to know what the Dream Theater forums rated, they had um, the 11th hour number one. I like that song. It's in my like top 10 or whatever. And they had um, Monument, like, number three, I think. And it it's all voting, but it's only a sample size of, like, 19 people. That's part of my issue is that, well, if you went to, like, a Facebook group or an email list, which you get dozens and dozens, you get maybe a couple hundred people, it's going to be different, I would guess, for one thing. Epitaph wasn't even in the top 50, you know. Epitaph wasn't in there. Prelude to Ruin wasn't in there. A lot of the art stuff wasn't in there. Um, the Light and Shade of Things, I think, was, what, number two or number three, but... I appreciate that because it's a ma masterpiece. Still Remains was also like... Number so those two songs were in the top five at least. I can at least be on board with that. But um, I'd put these two over. And, and the, the the other biggest issue I had with it is... Um, why was this thing separated when it's one actual piece? It's one composition, just... They split it up, you know? It's like with Dream Theater's Six Degree of Inner Turbulence on... The live version from Score, it's all one track. So, it's a suite. It's a suite. It's one track. It's one song. They are talking songs. We're not talking movements. <laughs> we may as well take, you know, the Ivory Gate of Dreams and split it up into the, what is it, eight movements that are on here? Eight movements. So, we should have added, instead of, you know, <laughs> I put Quietus. That was actually... On the compilation, separately, on the Chasing Time compilation. You know, Whispers on the Wind, is that in there? Acquiescence? Daylight Dreamers? Come on! They don't even have titles. They're just part one. It's like Sigurosa's Brackets album, too. It's, like, it's one song. So, to me, that's it always... It is one song. It always be, has been one song. And it always will be one song. But with Misplaced Childhood, I can sort of bend a little bit on because, it, yeah, they're separate pieces, but... To me, it flows all together, just like the Abbey Road Suite. The Abbey Road Suite are separate pieces, but they're not complete pieces. The the, the songs, the, the tracks that are separated on these are not complete pieces. They're segues, and it's a suite. So that's why it's one song to me. 
Anyway, I'd love to see your your track your. I'd love to see your top five, top ten, top twenty five, whatever fifty. If you want to put them in the comments of Fate's Warning or Fate's Warning John Arch John Arch Matheos. Love to see that. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we'll see you next time.